Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. You guys, I am so excited. I know every time I do this, I always say that I'm so excited. And it's because I am. I, we spend a lot of time doing meet and greets, you know, that I have with my guests. So I get to know them. So when we do the show itself, I am really excited about it. So I have Keisha. Keisha and I met through a mutual friend. Keisha saw how crazy I was and she was like, oh my God. And I warned them. I gave them a disclaimer. I said, and when I cut up, she was like, you are right. So she is such a blessing. And I'm so excited when I heard what she did for a living. I was like, you would be an awesome guest on the show. So with that said, Keisha, please share with us about yourself. Tell us about Keisha. Wow. Keisha is an empowerer. Keisha is an inspirer. Keisha loves to uplift people and give them a better um, sense of an improved life. And I do that as a mental health professional. I have been in the field of mental health for 20 plus years. And my areas of focus are self-care, self-esteem, uh, also, when you think of the clinical side of what I do, um, it's dealing with the areas of anxiety and, and trauma and depression and all those mental health issues that can, sun, excuse me, a lot of times plague us based on what we've experienced in our lives. And so I find great satisfaction in lifting others up through the professional side as well as the personal side um, when I do um, present as a speaker as well to empower women. I'm a native of Boston, Massachusetts, and um, I have two wonderful children. Of course, a mother would say that. <laughs> uh, my children, they, they, they're they grown, they're adults. Uh, however, they'll, as you I'm sure, heard many moms say they'll always be my babies. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, again, I, uh, through my writing, I'm an author and a poet and I reflect through what I've experienced um, transparently through my writing. And my writing does serve to transform and to inspire, to encourage, to uplift, to build up and to really let others know, specifically women, how they are beautiful. My mm -hmm. company is beautifully imaged. And with that, I demonstrate the love of Christ through what he mm -hmm. downloads into my spirit. Um, so that again, women, people in general, I also, you know, uh, speak to men a lot that have low self-esteem and low self-confidence and a lot of those self-sabotaging issues um, to let them know that they are beautifully imaged, mm -hmm. that they're beautiful just the way they are. Oh, I love that. And I love the fact that you include men because so often we relate low self-esteem and all those things with women, but sometimes we forget about men and they have feelings too. It's just the way that they deal with their feelings are different than women, but they still have them. So Absolutely. I love the fact with everything that you're doing, you do include men. That is so important. Yeah. I also love the fact that you are really there to empower people, yeah. teenagers, all people of different ages. And since we've come out of the pandemic, um, there's a lot of mental health issues that's going on because people really did struggle during that time. And Absolutely. so they need even more. You, I, I feel like you have even more people, people that may not have had an issue in the past, but now they are struggling with how do I deal with this now that I'm on the other side of the pandemic, which is they say is really not gone anywhere. It's just numbers have come down. It's still in the earth. But the point is, is that people still need help. So that I love it. <laughs> I love that we have Akisha out there helping people. So I know that you listened to my podcast and I know there were quite a few of the episodes that you like. So tell us what particular episode resonated with you when you heard it. You was like, I want to talk about that one. The power of words, that resonated deeply. 
Because we know that words can hurt. Words mm -hmm. do hurt. And someone can say just one word. You could be having an awesome day. And just that one word could cause a catastrophic day. Mm -hmm. Because people don't know what you've experienced in life from childhood experiences. They don't know some of the issues that you still may be mm -hmm. uh, challenged with that you are working through uh, as you are going through a self-discovery. I call it really uh, finding yourself through uh, self-introspection and, and taking a journey. And so when I listened to that, it really hit home in, in many different capacities, I thought of childhood. But what really stuck out to me that even though the hurtful words were uh, spoken, the at the end, those words did not stagnate that individual. Those words did not kill that individual's dreams, hopes, the plan of going on this uh, trip that she truly wanted to go on. Well, let Those me tell them, let me tell them about the story because that person was me. It is me, you know, and let me tell them a little bit of background because they're like, what is she talking about? Um, it was an early episode that I share and it was um, during the time when uh, my parents were divorced and my dad was dating and he, he had met this woman and, um, he had more than one woman, but this particular one was, she was high on the list because, you know, he wanted her to uh, be, he wanted his children <laughs> to know her. So she was high on the list because there was a lot of them we never met. Anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about my daddy like that. I love my daddy. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> anyway, he had called and invited us to a cookout and I was really debating if I wanted to go to the cookout or not. Uh, we had never met her before, and I thought it was kind of strange. So I asked my siblings if they were going. My brother, he was like, "Why? Why are you going through all of this?" And I said, "Because there was a trip that I wanted to go through. My church was having a conference, and I really didn't have the money to go. So I was debating, but I would need to leave. So anyway, I was having money issues, and my brother was like, "If if it's meant for you to go on a trip, you can go, but come to the cookout." Fast forward, I go to the cookout and I meet the girlfriend and she seems pretty nice and we're having a conversation. So um, somehow we got on the subject of me going to the conference and I was just sharing with her that I wasn't sure if I was going to go because I really didn't have the money, but the hotel was already paid for. All we had to do was drive there, transportation. And so before we could finish the conversation, she was called away. So we never finished the conversation. I get home. My dad calls me. And before I could really say anything, he is laying me out. I mean, going off on me about me going out of town with no money. And before I could tell him that I wasn't sure that I was going to go, I'm like, I I'm not even, I hadn't even made up my mind that I was going to go he just laid me out. And then the words that he said to me just threw me over. He told me, he said, you bring your fat ass over here right now and get this money. And I couldn't even respond. I, I just, I couldn't respond. And when I was able to say something, I said, thanks or okay. I went over there and I did not say one word to my dad, except for after he gave me the money, he said, thanks. But when I hung up the phone from that conversation, I just burst out crying because I felt like, why did he had to say that ass to me? Why couldn't he just say, just come over here and get the money? Why did he have to refer to my size? That I mean, I, my feelings were so hurt, but I pulled myself together. I went over there and I got the money. I went to the conference and had a good time. But after all of that, I came to the conclusion is that, you know what? I'm not going to lie here. I am beautiful. I am fluffy, you know, and I told myself I had to lift myself up because words are so powerful. They could have kept me down, but I didn't let them keep me down. 
I lifted myself up. So that's the story that Keisha is referring to when she talked about the person. So Keisha, what were your thoughts? I mean, when you heard it, like what? <laughs> yeah, I, it, again, it made me reflect back to incidents of my childhood and throughout my life. Uh, and what really stuck out again, again for me was the resilience, the strength that you had uh, when those negative comments, and especially when it's coming from family, it seems like it, it goes deeper. It cuts yeah. real deep and you bleed very heavily. <laughs> and I emphasize very, because again, as it was in the story, fi family, they're supposed to be a, a level of support, mm -hmm. a level of safety, safety, a, a haven of trust. And a lot of times when there are words that are spoken that are detrimental, that pierce you uh, like a knife, like a sword, I'll say, it, it takes away from that safety and that security. And for some people, it could cause low self-esteem, mm -hmm. uh, self-identity issues, mm -hmm. uh, emotional issues, and um, so many other issues that come from, again, self-sabotaging, thinking and, and um, believing, but because of those words that were spoken. And so in addition to that, I thought of the famous uh, when life gives you lemons mm -hmm. and those words were the lemons that you make lemonade. Lemonade, yes. And so that was like, wow, what a good way to celebrate herself to say that, okay, he said that. My my dad, who I did not expect that, but you know what? I am beautiful just the way I am. I am. Call me fat, call me fluffy, call me thick. I am beautifully me. That's right. Oh my God. And it took me a while to get there. During that time, I had become a Christian because prior to um, that particular day, um, that particular time in my life, I, if you know my story, you know that I didn't talk from the age of six until I was 23. And so I became a Christian and God was slowly giving me my voice back and I didn't have any self-esteem. So I was that was during the time where God was really helping me to learn how to like and love myself. So that was tr a tr trans um, transition for me. Now, had it been maybe two years prior, those words would have just took me out because it was my father. So I, the first thing I would have thought, well, you know, he calling me that. So all men think I'm just a F, you know, fat ASS, you know. So I, I am just so grateful. But I know a lot of times, especially girls, I know boys have it too. We have had things that have said to us that kind of like really bothered us or really got to our self-esteem. Have you ever had, do you have a story where something like that really happened to you and how did you deal with it? Absolutely. Again, I reflect back to childhood when family members made certain comments. Oh, she looks like Bruce. Bruce is my dad. Oh, she walks like him. You know, it was this whole debate. Hmm, is, is she his daughter? <laughs> uh, because of my dark complexion. And I went through a great deal of verbal comments, I'll say, mm -hmm. uh, from certain family members. And it hurt. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand it, actually. It's like, okay, um, is something wrong with me because mm -hmm. of my complexion? And, you know, I felt almost like I wasn't good enough, like I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't, it, it made me feel really bad. Oh, to be dark skinned, you're pretty. Oh, you have beautiful hair. What do you mix with your hair? So um, you have good hair and to be dark skinned. And, you know, I later on when I turned 50, I decided to chop my hair off because I wanted to. 
because beauty is not defined by my hair. And so there were comments along the way um, from, again, certain family members that made me feel different as, mm -hmm. you know, compared to my cousins who were um, much lighter complexion. And I felt ugly. I, I just, it, it, it put a, it, it caused the self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. It caused all of those self, negative self images, every negative self thing that you can think of. It, it got produced in my childhood because of comments. And then it continued on throughout the course of my adolescence mm -hmm. with boys. Mm -hmm. They would tease me because yeah. I was, you know, because I am dark skinned. <laughs> and so that, that was that, you know, entire experience was very difficult for me. And it did form the belief system that again was self-sabotaging. Yes. I had emotional issues. Mm -hmm. I became a bully. I was always protecting the underdog. You became the bully. Cause I was going to ask you, yes. were you bully? Cause I was bully, of course, for being fat. But yes. you became, oh my God, keep talking because I have to hear from the bully side. Yes. You know, <laughs> I need to hear from the other <laughs> point of view. So please keep talking. Yes, I became the bully because I was bullied um, from my male counterparts and it hurt. I became uh, the fighter of my family, so to speak, because I felt like I had to defend myself because, yeah. you know, I just developed this aggression and so when I would, uh, you know, at school, my best friend, I spoke with her yesterday. She reminded me how I beat this girl down and we were very young. And I don't, wow. I don't remember that, but she does. <laughs> what I did with her face in the mud. Oh my God. <laughs> I think she may have teased me. I, 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 will, I will have to get more detail from my, best, my bestie when we talk again. But yes, I became the bully. I became the one that hurt people with my hands and even sometimes with my words. Wow. And then at the same token, I became the protector of people who were being yeah. bullied. So I had this two part uh, way that I, I approached bullying, if you will. <laughs> I was the advocate as I, as I am now in my profession, but I was also the adversary. I, <laughs> I played two roles when, when needed and necessary. <laughs> wow. You, it, this is, I have never met the, a bully before the bully, but I understand now because sometimes we need to look at the other person and the reason why and bullies always have a reason why they do the things that they do and for me I became the bully after I became a Christian and got my voice back and the mm -hmm. reason why I say I became more or less the bully is because for like 18 years I had been bullied so that's all I knew so when mm -hmm. God gave me my voice back I was like I'm gonna get you before you got me now, Correct. I didn't physically put my hands on anybody, but my mouth was a lethal weapon. I would <laughs> cuss you out. I was going to tell you, or I was going to call you a name before you came me. So I became a Christian bully, bullying people. I'm like, oh, what? Say it again. Say it again. Like I could, look, like I could fight. I, can't, I couldn't fight at the time, you know, but I used my words as, you know, as a weapon. And yeah. people would get afraid of me because of my mouth. But <laughs> as I share in my story, you know, God allowed me to hear myself one day at a football game. He shut the whole stadium down just so I could hear myself talking wow. to someone. And I was cussing this man. I, I was going off. And when I heard myself, I was I was done. I was so upset with myself. By the time I got to my car, I was full bone crying. I was so mm -hmm. hurt because I'm like, oh my God, I am now a bully. I've mm -hmm. turned into the people who mistreated me. And I had to ask the Lord. I was like, listen, Lord, please help me. I don't want to go back to not talking, but I definitely don't want to continue to beat people up with my mouth. That is yeah. horrible. And I'm walking around yeah. supposed to be a Christian, you know, a child of God and yeah. God has helped me. Now I'm going to be honest. I am not 
all the way there. You catch me on a bad day, <laughs> but I'm a lot better than I was, you know, because I'm aware of it. And so I take moments of pausing, you know, to like, okay, don't say it. Just take a deep breath, go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. So when did you realize that the bully part of you was not a good thing to do? Understanding that you knew that the reason why you were doing it is because you felt unsafe. You felt people, you know, being mean and ugly and nasty to you. Like me, I had that moment when God shut down the football stadium just so I could hear myself. And then I realized, oh my God. And I realized what I was doing was wrong and bad. Did you have a moment like that when you said, oh my God, I can't keep doing this? <laughs> Actually, you know, when I think back, it, when I got into high school, I think that came with uh, a degree of maturity. Okay. I started coming into my my own, you know, still learning, of course, still uh, facing some hard knocks of, you know, going through uh, adolescence and, you know, just life at that time. But I started to realize that, you know, that what I was doing before, uh, that was a, prote I was in protective mode. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I did not feel at that point that it was necessary anymore because I wasn't being uh, bullied by the time I got to high school. Everybody I... was scared of you. The word was out. Don't mess with Keisha. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know, things things started, you know, uh, smoothing out. So I didn't have to have my defenses up. I didn't have to, uh, you know, be protective. I, I think what happened though, as I uh, matriculated through uh, life into my adulthood, it uh, in my relationships with men, uh, it, it caused some self worth issues. I became quiet, if you will. I, I didn't speak up much for myself, and that's when verbal abuse kicked in. So I, I became reclusive, I believe. Once I got into my twenties. I just didn't, as you said, have a voice. And then God had to bring me through mm -hmm. a, a self-discovery, self-introspective journey to validate me, to affirm me. Because wow. I be I went from a bully to just, oh, I'm not going to say anything. It's okay if they say that. You know, I, I was letting people again, again abuse me verbally, but I didn't speak up for myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, that's so amazing because it sounds like you and I had the same, our story was the same, but it was like the reverse. For me, I didn't talk until I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't talking then. I had lost my voice, but when mm -hmm. I got my voice back, I became the bully. You were the bully. And then when you feel like, okay, I'm not going to bully anymore, then you lost your voice. So we kind of like flip. But yeah. what's amazing is both of us are now like delivered from all of that junk for the most part. I know daily Ooh. we walk in deliverance, you know, daily, but yeah. we both turned out. And that's why I love stories because stories help. We have a connection. We see that we've been Definitely. through the same thing, but we still have a great outcome and yes. it helps us to help others. So when you see a student or a a preteen, when you see someone and you can see that person, you can see yourself in that person, what do you say to them? How do you help them? Well, I first let them know how unique and beautifully mm. made they are. That Father God spent special time creating them. Yes. That when he was forming them, he knew exactly what he was doing. And I really uh, focus on don't let anything, anybody, you love you. You be the best you, you, mm -hmm. be, you be uniquely you, uh, regardless of whatever physical issues you think you have. Look, rock yourself, celebrate you. I really lift them up because our young people go through an extreme amount of issues. I mean, they we, do. We know from A to Z. And I do serve in the capacity at my church dealing with the youth ministry as well as the children's ministry. So we have teen talk. And so, and we talked about 
uh, last Sunday, anxiety and depression. So that's my niche. So I, I was all in that. And so basically really affirming them so that they can embrace themselves to love. Self-love comes from self, from you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the tools, I give them the tools they need. Speak in positive affirmations. What do you like about yourself? What do you love about yourself? Then you focus on those things and you build from there. We are all a work in progress, a work in process. And you don't have to be perfect for anybody else. You challenge you, yourself. You be your own best uh, uh, ambassador. Yeah. You, know, you, just, you just do you. Whatever that looks like. And you don't have to prove yourself to anything or to anybody and again, I just reiterate, you be the best you that you can be. You know, you put a smile on your face. You celebrate you and, and all the uniqueness that you bring. And I just really focus on that, even in my profession and dealing with the population that I serve, because a lot of them have had not so good experiences as um, ch as children. And, you know, it has caused them to have a esteem issues and confidence issues. And so when I speak on the positive affirmations, it's like, say this to yourself and believe it. Yeah. Believe what you're saying. Use the power of these words to impart into yourself and to speak life to you, to encourage yourself like David had to do in, in the Holy Bible. So yes, uh, I, I really, uh, I'm there cheering them on all the way and just giving them the tools, the life skills that they need to, to flourish. I love that. And I am a, a strong proponent of affirmations and I do my own affirmations. I tell myself the things that I want to hear. You know, everybody has those affirmations out there and they're great for, for the beginners. But at some points you need to tell yourself, looking at me, I tell my, looking at me, girl, you are so pretty. Mm. Mm, girl, girl, you are beautiful. beautiful. Yes, girl, your, your hair looks snatched today. I tell <laughs> myself the things that I want to hear from yes. someone else. And I tell myself, and over time, I start to believe it. Even when I look a hot dang on mess, I'll look at the mirror and say, you look a hot dog. <laughs> look, I tell myself, you look a hot mess today, but girl, yesterday you were smoking. You look good. You know, and I do that. But I also realize, and, and, and now I've come to the point where I have, I tell my nieces and nephews and everything, it's no one else's responsibility to make you feel good about yourself. That's a courtesy. That part. To correct. be so, it's, that is yeah. so important. That's a courtesy. When someone gives you a compliment, that's a courtesy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But yeah. it's not their responsibility. Now you would think family members, but hey, after a while, you know, your mom and your daddy, they'll call your name when you make them mad. So <laughs> my point my point is, it's no one else's responsibility to make you feel good about yourself. All of that is just like added and, you know, extra. But add that's on. why it's in add-ons. Thank you. And that's why it's important that you tell yourself you know, that you, you get in the mirror and you, you just tell yourself, you know, if somebody said something negative to you yesterday, you take that negative and turn around. Mm -hmm. Tom said yesterday I was fat. Okay. Well, I was fat to him, but I am fluffy. Fabulous. Hey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So I know we talked about um, briefly about, you know, younger ones, but Please talk about how you empower men, how you help them, because I would think it would be a little bit difficult because you're not a man, so you've never walked in their shoes. You only hear what they're saying. So how do you help men with their well, issues? Okay. Well, based on the men that I've experienced in, in having the issue and what they've shared about you know, their, their personal lives, whether it be uh, their marriages and their relationships and just how they have demonstrated um, to me as far as their kind heartedness. So just their positive qualities that I had the privilege and the opportunity to experience. I focus on that. I affirm, again, back to affirming, I affirm them. It's like, you know, you are great. You're so, you're so loving. You're so kind, you know, making them feel good about who they 
are as okay. me. I lift them up and I pull those qualities that they may not think mm. are, you know, great because sometimes it's like, oh yeah, okay, well, yeah, I work, I do. You are a great provider. You just did what? You bought your wife. Look, look at you. You go, boy. You know? Yeah. So again, just verbalizing those amazing qualities that they do have and just I think with men, you do have to approach it differently mm -hmm. because you don't, of course, want to ever make them feel less than like uh, masculinity wise and, and stripping them and emasculating them. But I focus on the positive, the positive of who they are and just who they are, their, their, the characteristics that they have that I admire. It's like, oh, wow, man, you got it going on. Yes, you know, and, and you know, it's funny because they just, they've smiled. You know, they, they may not say, oh, thank you, but they, they're smiling. They, you know, through that smile, they're like, oh, yeah, she said the right word. Yeah, right. Oh, right. And it has made them feel better. And then they've come back to me and said how, you know, I, I made a difference. You know, how I changed them. It's like, Keisha, you're just that type of person that I, I just can't, I can't, I never can get rid of you. I'll never forget you. And, I, and they'll, you know, I've had calls they've called me you know just to check on me see how i'm doing so i think again the po the positive power of words goes a long way you know and and um the, what you just said is so important because it words really do they can make or break you and for yeah. a man to be vulnerable enough to say you know i need to hear that affirmation mm -hmm. i need to hear that and i need <laughs> to hear it coming from a woman you know because i don't know if a man and a man gonna be like but boy you handsome you know <laughs> you look fine today boy you look fly you know they do that manly stuff but right. <laughs> some of that emotional stuff they need to get that from a woman, a woman. because the first woman in their life was their mom and that's the one that gave them that nourishment that love and all that so they need to get mm -hmm. it from a woman and I, I try hard to be positive like if I'm in a store somewhere I try to smile at them you know or I, I'll say give them a compliment or something like yeah. that because for me I feel like men get slighted that's Thank just you. my personal opinion you. because we, you know, women, we like, girl, I like that dress. Look, your hair look cute today. But I don't know <laughs> if men get that as often as we get it. Like Thank today you. I went out for brunch and, oh, your hair looks so nice. Really, Oh, you let it grow out. You know, we get that. But I don't know if it was some men there with us if we would have complimented them. We may or may not, but I'm just saying it's just easier for women to compliment than You're right. it is for men because- I'm trying to think, oh, okay. My dad and my and my brothers, this is their compliment. Mm, them some nice shoes. Where you get them from? Oh yeah, I might have to go and get some. That was that's the extent of the compliment. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it. I like them shoes. You know where you get them from. Oh, I might have Accurate. to go over there and try. That's it. <laughs> that's <is> true. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice jacket you got on. Where'd you get it from? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the extent of that. That's that's it. So at the end of my um episodes, I always ask questions. And so we're gonna answer those questions right now. Um, I have you to answer first and then I will answer. The first question it says, have you said something to a family member or anyone that you regret saying have you ever verbally out of your mouth said something that you regret saying i i have and, mm -hmm. and it makes me reference my daughter because during her high school years or uh, kind of throughout <laughs> her growing up years we had lots of challenges lots okay. of challenges and so th there were some words that I said, and, and I had to uh, reflect back on those words. And I, I, you know, I went back to my daughter. I put on my, my big girl panties and I went to my daughter and I expressed to her my apologies and I affirmed her uh, because, you know, she, uh, I'll say later on in her life, she was experiencing depression and I downplayed that. Okay. And, and so, yeah. And she was like, mom, you're in the profession. How could you say that to me? And I 
was like, girl, get over it. <laughs> Come on. What are you talking about? But I did go back to her. And okay. <laughs> well, I have to say yes. And as, as, as I was reading the question, my favorite aunt, one of my favorite aunts, I said something to her that I regretted. And I felt so bad. I was a teenager though. And you know how teenagers can be. We would fly off at the mouth or anything. It's yeah. like something wrong with our chem the chemicals in our bodies are so far <laughs> off. We don't know what we're doing. And right. I said something and I didn't really think about it too much until I was driving home. And I was like, you shouldn't have said that to her. I bet you hurt her feelings. And I want to say that I did apologize or I brought it up, you know, or something, but I can't remember because it wasn't at the moment that I realized it was when I was driving home that I realized it. So yes, I have done so. And I think we've all done it, not meaning to, well, some, some people out there mean to, but for <laughs> most part, <laughs> some people don't really mean it. Yeah. And the fact that you could go back and apologize, I think that is awesome. So the next question is, has someone said something to you that has hurt your feelings and how did it affect you? And that's kind of like what we've, what we've been talking about today. But recently, within the last year or so, has that happened to you where somebody has hurt your feelings? And how did you deal with it as an, a grown, grown adult? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I can't say that it has happened in the last year or two. Again, I can reflect back to prior experiences with individuals uh, uh, that said some hurtful things or in comparison, they compared me to another um, person, um, whether it be a family member. And, and that hurt uh, because I'm like, I'm me. Why are you comparing me to mm. that person? I don't like a lot of the qualities that person has. So, you know, but to say that within the the last year or two, again, uh, if it was something said because of where I am today, it didn't affect me. It didn't even, pin, it didn't even touch the surface. So. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. Cause I, I was going to say somebody, someone may have, but I didn't receive it that way. I either it blowed way. it off. Or I was like, I know they ain't talking to me. I, I, yeah. Well, you know, I know they're not talking to me because that is not me. That's what they perceive. So I That's think right. we age out of stuff. And I wrote really? a story and I shared a story on my podcast about aging out. And I think when we get to certain ages or we get in certain places, things that used to bother us, they don't bother us anymore. It was like, yeah. been there, done that, go on down the street somewhere, find <laughs> somebody else. Or, or when they used to say, what was it? Talk to the hand. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I am too grown to be dealing with the going around the corner, you know, yeah. go to your other friend because you can't say that to me anymore. That's right. <laughs> well, Keisha, this has been so great. I, I am so happy that you agreed to come um, to be a, a guest on the show. Yeah. Yes, I am because... I, I love what you do for a living and how you help so many people in a positive way. And every time that I've been around you, you have been positive. You've been smiling, <laughs> laughing, and always trying to find something positive to say in people. So yeah. you're not only doing it as a career, but you are actually walking living example of what you do. And everybody can't say that because some people, you know, they got two people. When they get to work, they one way. <laughs> as soon as that door closed, when they walk out the building, they turn into hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, from, yeah. Heaven, from heaven to hell. Yes. They can be all. Oh, and uh, real quick, I know, I, I y'all know I'm a talker. Anyway, my nephew, it is so funny. My nephew, he won, when he was in school, high school or middle school, he won, um, student of the month or something that they they do senior um student of the month whatever and they give you this thing to put in your yard you know because you're yeah. such a wonderful thing <laughs> when my brother got home and saw it in the yard he was like what's child he's talking about and when he realized that it was my baby i call him my baby langston he was like him <laughs> like a whole was like him <laughs> in school. He was the golden child. Everybody, his teachers, everybody thought he was so polite. He was just a well, perfect child. When he got home, 
<laughs> oh, did, I used to call him the Tasmanian devil because he could go from one to a hundred and just like that. But that is my baby. He has an amazing heart, but he just had some little issues for a little bit with his anger, not knowing anger. how to, mm -hmm. you know, to balance it out. But yeah, yeah well, that side, my brother was like, who? My, my <laughs> so Keisha, I know that you have a book, so please tell us about your books, your poems, and just tell us where we can um, find the book, if we can find the book, or or we can reach out to you. You know, let's say we have a child that's having some difficulties and we want to get some information and we don't know quite where to go. You know, if we could just um, reach out to you to get resources or just, yeah, you know, to you. talk, and please tell us where we can get this from. Okay, so my first book, both my books, um, you can find on Amazon, the first book, Breathe Forth, uh, that's B-R-E-A-T-H-E, -E, Forth. This uh, other book is A Treasure Within, and again, uh, these talk about self-love, self-discovery, self-introspection, all that good self stuff, and uh, uh, they can be found on Amazon. Also... You can contact me at Keisha, K-E-I-S-H-A, Barham, B-A-R-H-A-M, the number eight, at gmail.com. And I have been dubbed the resource queen. So any information that you may need regarding mental health, I am your girl. Uh, empowerment, I'm also a certified life coach. I... Uh, can walk you through uh, just different areas of your life that you want to see become um, better. You want to become a better you. And uh, again, it. I'm just, I'm so excited um, about what God has in store, um, not just for myself, but for so many others. And I'm welcoming the opportunity to walk out the journey with you. I love it. So I will make sure I have all her information, the names of her book and all that information in the description. But one, one thing that I want you to take note, not only does Keisha do this for a living, but she is really a walking, breathing representation of what she does. So if you reach out to her, you talk to her, you're going to get all that love, the smiles <laughs> and all that stuff. You're going to get all of that and it's genuine. So, you know, if you were struggling with anything, please reach out. Don't su uh, suffer in silence. Is that what it says? Yeah. Don't suffer in yeah, silence. Don't reach suffer out and silence. get some help. All right, Keisha, thank you so much for being here. I have thoroughly enjoyed you. Thank you, lovely lady. It has been my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. All right.